Good morning. Glad you're with us. I'm Pastor Kurt Koppel. We welcome you here to Denison United Methodist Church, and we welcome those who are online, and uh, we thank you for being part of our worship service today also. So let's get to it. <laughs> Who's got the first announcement? Anybody? Mike? Well, hopefully everybody's getting as excited as I am about making pancakes and eating pancakes this Wednesday. Um, it will be starting at 5.30 before our Ash Wednesday service. Those of the, you that have talked to me about helping, I appreciate that. Anyone else would like to help, please talk to me. Um, I do have a job for everyone that's willing after church. We need to set up some tables and chairs so we are prepared for that. So uh, remember at 5.30, we'll have pancake and sausage and hopefully coffee and some juice. So come and have your uh, early supper before church. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, for being the coordinator and pushing that through. Everybody see the insert in their bulletin? 5.30 pancake feed, 7 o'clock worship. Ash Wednesday, Lent starts. Any other announcements? You two are over there. You're supposed to be over here. <laughs> Hi, Coletta. Well, normally I wouldn't say anything, but today is the day, so I got to say something. It's Mike's birthday. And it's also a change of a decade, so, Ooh. you know, <laughs> so, 70, <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mike. There'll be counseling after church if you'd like to talk to me. <laughs> if it's the changing of the big one or whatever. Hey, there you are with a mic. You have to stand up now. You ready? Okay. Well, you know, it's the time of year, Girl Scout cookies. So somebody would like to ask everybody if they would like to buy Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> Just tell them what I did. Yeah. Let me hear your pitch. I've got Girl Scout cookies. All your pitch needs to be is I have Girl Scout cookies. I have Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> See her. <laughs> she has a pretty good list going. I ordered some. Any other announcements you'd like to share this morning? Just a reminder, I guess, on Thursday is newsletter deadline, so get your news articles in, please. I guess that's it. Uh oh, I would add one. This week, it's the middle school uh, class, uh, middle school play. It's uh, Matilda this year that they're putting on. It's really kind of fun to see all those middle school kids get up there and perform for us. So if you, if you uh, like to do that, I'm sure they'd appreciate you showing up. All right. That's great. If there's no other announcements, let's focus in on worshiping and do our congregational intro. <laughs> Yeah. 
Join me in the call to worship. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. God's glory fills the earth, but sometimes we, like Elisha, do not think we are ready to encounter glory. Sometimes we are like the disciples who witnessed Jesus' transfiguration and wanted to cling to that one glorious moment. So we gather today, some of us feeling ready and some of us feeling wholly unprepared, yet all are called together to worship and to be led by glory out into the world. Join me in the opening prayer. Mighty God, stay with us always, not only in our worship, but as we share the risk and challenge of living our faith. By your powerful spirit, turn our fear to courage. Your glory shines in the face of Christ. 
shine in our hearts and lives. May your name be praised, glorious God. Amen. The first scripture is from Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up to a high mountain, apart by themselves. As he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Amen. We come to that time in our worship service to share our joys and our concerns. I want to tell you, I got a call this early morning from Doug Schmitz, and he is not feeling very well, has a sinus infection, I guess. But the most important thing he wanted me to tell you is that uh, Julie is going to have a birthday. (laughs) I believe it's on the 13th. (laughs) Patty, wait a minute. We have another birthday this month. And I always enjoy putting this guy on the spot because he deserves it. Happy birthday, Parker. It's tomorrow. All right. Yeah, did we get everybody? (laughs) Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Everybody have a great birthday. It's a great month, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome month. All right. Don't forget, you know, it's chocolate day coming up, too. Any other joys or concerns you'd like to share? Huh. Okay. Well, let's just center ourselves and spend a little moment meditating here and listening to God. Then I'll do a prayer, and then we'll do the Lord's Prayer together. Heavenly Father, take our life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. We are yours, Lord, though we fight for control. Take our lives and make us yours. Take our moments and our days and let them flow in ceaseless praise. We are yours, Lord, through our busyness. It gets in the way sometimes. Take our days, make them yours. Father, take our hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. We are yours, Lord. Though we are not always in service, take our hands and make them yours. Take our feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. We are yours, Lord. Even though our feet don't always move with your spirit, take our feet and make them yours. Gracious Heavenly Father, watch over us this week. Help us, heal us, guide us. We thank you for your mercy, your grace. We thank you for teaching us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Kids, come on up. Do you know this song? If you do, join in. Okay? Love, love, love. That's what it's all about. Because God loves us, we love each other. Mother, father, sister, brother. Everybody sing and shout. Because that's what it's all about. It's about love, love, love. It's about love, love, love. Just didn't know it, did ya? Hmm. I like that song. <laughs> well, you know, this is Valentine's this week, and so, of course, I was thinking about that. So I brought a little experiment for you today. First of all, we know that God puts love in our heart, don't we? And because he loves us, what are we supposed to do? Love him and, and others. And today, what I want to talk to you about is when you have the love of God in your heart and you show it to other people, you are helping to spread God's love in the whole entire world, which is really, really important. I got an experiment. Let's see. This is just water. There's nothing special about it. I just got it from the sink, okay? Well, here's, here's what we're going to do. That heart at the bottom is God's love for you. And God put his love in you. Now watch what's going to happen when you have God's love in your heart and you spread it to others. Can you see okay? You notice anything? Come closer if you can't see. See what happened? Yep. I hold it up. They can see it. It wasn't up in those hearts to start with, was it? But when we show God's love to others, all of that love spreads from that from our hearts into others. So you have a really important job spreading God's love to others in the world. Now I I've, I've done this one before but you guys were too little. You weren't you weren't old enough to remember it so I thought I could do it again. But this time I thought, why don't why don't I give you this? And then I'd like you to take it and find somebody that you can tell this story to. Maybe not even necessarily mom and dad. Maybe a friend, maybe you want to take it to school, show it to your teacher or something like that. But that's one of the ways that we spread, spread God's love by telling others. And also just by the way we act with it in our hearts. Let's, I'll give you one. I'll give you, let's say a prayer. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Dear God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you that for the time that we have been able to have together. Lord, be with us this week. Help us to show love to everyone that we see. In your name we pray. Amen.
The sermon scripture for this morning is from Luke chapter 9, verses 28 to 36. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said, While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of these things they had seen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, choir. (laughs) Thank you, Rita. Let us pray. God of glory and mercy, before his death and shame, your son went to the mountaintop and you revealed his life in glory where the prophets witnessed him. You proclaimed him your son but he returned to die among us. Help us to face evil with courage, knowing that all things, even death, are subject to your transforming power. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here we go again, at the cusp of a change in the season. Sometimes we treat transfiguration as if it's the last Sunday in the season of Epiphany, a kind of kind of an explanation mark or a point to the ordinary uh, time that takes us from Epiphany to Ash Wednesday. Now I want you to put on your imaginary hat for a little bit, and I want you to imagine, if you will, that you were being Peter or James or John. And just put yourself in their shoes for a little bit. You are being led up by Jesus to pray privately. And this is not the first time, the first time of that practice. But little did you know, this time, It was going to be an unimaginable and mind-boggling experience. Suddenly, Jesus started to look different. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. To add more intrigue to this, Moses and Elijah appeared. And the climax was when a cloud covered them, gripping them with fear. And God's voice boomed through the clouds. Let that just settle in a little bit. I don't know about you, but that would raise my heartbeat, I think, a little bit. Sometimes we can all be looking at the same thing and see something completely different. Let me give you an example. A college criminologist, he was a professor, was about to give the final exam to his students when two armed men 
with handguns, ran into the room and pulled one of the students out of his seat. They roughed him up a bit. And then they dragged him out of the room, saying, we told you, if you wouldn't pay up, this would happen. Well, after the class calmed down, the professor explained that their final exam was to describe in detail all they had just seen and heard. Amazingly, no one got an A on this exam. Everyone had seen the same thing, but everyone saw it somewhat differently. Some even had seen four armed men. Others said that they took out a girl from the room. And almost no one remembered why they took the young man. No one had seen the professor briefly holding up a sign saying, this is just a simulation. Everyone had seen the same thing, but none of them saw everything that happened. Peter has a similar experience. Let's look at our today's scriptures a little bit more. In the accounts of Matthew and Mark, they add a bit more detail to the story, adding a dialogue from Jesus, educating them on what was going to be happening. The Son of Man would suffer greatly and be treated with utter contempt. They were not to tell anyone about this experience until he had risen from the dead. Naturally, there were many things puzzling to the disciples about this experience. It appears that Jesus, he, he took these men up there to, to get a glimpse of who Jesus really was. But it had to be really terribly confusing for them. You see, we kind of have the advantage of knowing how the story ends. You know the old saying, hindsight is twenty twenty. But in having the retrospect, that ability, we can summarize, summarize several things. First, which we already suggested, Jesus took Peter and James and John to the top of the mountain to show them who he really was. Not merely a great prophet, but God's own son. The transfiguration was a vision, uh, a brief glimpse of the true glory of the king. And this was a special revelation of Jesus' divinity to the three uh, disciples. And it was God's divine affirmation of everything Jesus had done and was about to do. The transfiguration was a foretaste of heaven. The three, Jesus, Moses, Elijah, were doing something worth noting also. They were talking to each other. They were talking together. And in God's world, interactions count highly. People are individuals with minds and hearts and opinions. People are also part of a wider whole, connected by relationships built on sharing. Friendship is the key. Make time and opportunities to talk with others. Good conversations act as a training for eternity. Moses and Elijah were, to, were the two greatest prophets in the Old Testament the Old Covenant. He predicted the coming of a great prophet in Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 15. It reads, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your fellow Israelites, 
and you must listen to him. Elijah, a powerful prophet in Israel, he represents the prophets who foretold the coming of the Messiah. Moses and Elijah's presence with Jesus confirm both Jesus as the Messiah and so being his mission to fulfill God's law and the words of God's prophets. And just as God's voice is in the cloud over Mount Sinai, with Moses he gave authority to his law. And God's voice at the transfiguration gave authority to Jesus' works. You see, Peter in this scripture wanted to build three memorials for these three great men. And Peter really had the right idea about Christ. But the timing was wrong. Peter wanted to act. But this was a time of worship and adoration. He wanted to memorialize the moment, but he was supposed to learn and move on. He may also have been thinking of the festival of shelters, where shelters were set up to commemorate the exodus, God's deliverance of the Israelites from slavery and Egypt. He wanted to keep Moses and Elijah with them. But this was not what God wanted. Peter's desire to build memorials for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah may also show his understanding that the real faith is built on three cornerstones. But Peter, he grew in his understanding. And eventually, he would write of Jesus as the cornerstone of the church. As God's son, Jesus has God's power and authority. And that is why his word should be our final authority. Jesus is more than just a great leader, a good example, a good influence, or just a great prophet. He is the son of God. And when you understand that profound truth, The only adequate response is worship. And when you have a correct understanding of Christ, you will obey him. If a person's teaching is true, it will agree with Jesus' teachings. And don't be hasty to seek advice and guidance merely from human sources. Go to Christ's message, God's word, the Bible. Test everything you hear against Jesus' works, and you will not be led astray. So, what do we see when we read the story of the transfiguration? Do we see Jesus as Moses' and Elijah's equal? Or do we see our Lord and Savior standing before us in his glory? A glory that is so bright that it it hurts the eye to look upon. The transfiguration was done so that we might believe Christ to be an accumulation of the law and the prophets. All that had come before leads us to recognize that we are sinners who need forgiveness. And that forgiveness comes only from the life the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And because we have seen through the eyes of Peter and James and John the transfiguration of the Lord, let us be transformed that the image so that we might reach out to others with the truth of salvation. God still loves you. So much that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him might not perish, but have everlasting life. Let us see the true image of our risen Savior in all his glory, that we might be transformed into a resurrection people, 
reborn into the new covenant, finding hope that was unfindable before and reaching out to the least and to the last and the lost that they too might enter into the kingdom of God. When you begin your Lenten journey, folks, I encourage you to start this Ash Wednesday so that you may experience a journey like none other Amen. This time we'd like to ask the ushers to come forward and give us the opportunity to take our morning offering. Will the ushers come forward, please? Please join with me in the offertory prayer. God of power and patience, we gather in worship to wait on your presence and to be filled with your power. Jesus healed with a touch and taught us that you are the source of the true healing that can make us whole. As we take time now in worship to offer our gifts to you, we pray that they might be used to bring healing, a body, a spirit, broken relationships, healing of a planet that is groaning under carelessness and greed, healing of a world community that is deeply divided by distrust and self-interest. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
Here's your blessing. Go now in the strength and the power of what you have witnessed in this place, knowing that the glory that leads us into transition also comforts us in growing pains and sustaining us as we take up our mantle and cross over to the other side. Amen.